Peace, peace, beautiful beings. This is episode 13 of Coach V's Mental Health Mukbang. Yay! If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. Coach V's Mental Health Mukbang is where I have a candid conversation about mental health while enjoying a meal. The meals can be purchased from a restaurant, it could be leftovers from my kitchen, or we've been grateful enough to have a few small business owners donate either a meal and or a dessert to sponsor one of the mukbang. So if you're one of those small business owners, I thank you. Or if you would like to sponsor a future mental health mukbang, please feel free to send us a message on our website at www.coachvmp.com. The link will be in the description so we can coordinate all of that. Okay, so today I have my reusable Gatorade bottle where I have some Hawaiian Punch brand lemonade. Don't come for my life. We keep it a buck over here. And today's mental health mukbang is sponsored by my oldest daughter, Anna, yet again. She door dashed me some of the Kuka, what are they called? Kuka barrel mungo wings or something from Outback. If you haven't had them, OMG, get your entire life together in my Tamar Braxton voice. So I wanted to have lunch today uninterrupted. So I took 20, a 20 minute lunch break today, watched my new show um, on Netflix and I ate six of the wings before I realized how many I eaten. So I saved four for the mukbang. <laughs> So I've actually already had lunch today. However, I wanted to get myself back on my complete schedule with my mukbang. So I went ahead and saved four of these wings so I can talk to y'all today um, candidly about mental health. So I have, if I can get the container open, I warmed them up. I ate the celery down to one piece. I have like a few scoops of the ranch left. And here are the four wings that I have left. So they come in like four flavors, either dry, hot, mild, or medium. I got hot, but they be lying because ain't nothing hot about these wings but the temperature. Definitely not the seasoning. Um, but I wanted to save them so I can have a conversation with you all real quick um, about mental health. And the topic we're going to talk about is your boy Ryan Henry from Black Ink Crew. And the, his best friend and the baby mama, the best friend, and this whole little entanglement situation they got going on. And the reason why I want to chat about that is because, unfortunately, that type of situation is a very common situation slash entanglement that happens within our communities. And a lot of times, unfortunately, situations like that end tragically, meaning death or you know, the person, you know, ends their life and then the life of their spouse, like it can get really ugly. So I thought because of how much attention this story is getting, that it would be kind of cool to have a conversation so that we can help people who may be going through that situation or who may recently been involved in that type of situation to give them some sort of hope or guidance and a peaceful resolution to the situation versus a violent, horrible outcome. And I am choosing my words carefully because this is YouTube. So I wanna get my message across, across to the community without it being attacked or whatever by YouTube. And I know I'm a very small YouTuber, but I'm just gonna practice now how to be careful so that when we get big over here on this channel, because the information is much needed, then we're already hip to what we can say and what we can't say. So y'all know how we do. Even though I only have four wings left, y'all know when I get excited and passionate about a topic, I forget to eat. And uh, y'all also know that I'm a polite eater, so I'm still getting used to this whole mukbang thing of talking and eating, so it is what it is. Y'all like my hoodie? I made sure I had it on in the last episode, so I wanted to have it on again for people who may have missed it. This is a hoodie with my signature trademark logo that mental health is sexy. We have the lotus flower in the middle. And you can order this hoodie at www.coachvmp.com. While you're there, check out the other two designs that I currently have on the website. 
Um, there are other designs. I just haven't updated the website yet. Um, so my clothing line is all about mental health awareness and bringing attention to how cool it is to protect and support your mental health. So yeah, so that's that. But that's for another video. Okay. So unless you've been under a rock, you are aware of the scandalizations and the entanglements that's going on with Black Ink Crew's Ryan Henry, his best friend or former best friend, I don't know what their current status is, and the baby mother of his best friend. And yep, right now their names are slipping my mind, but Ryan Henry is etched right here because I keep seeing his name in my YouTube video suggestions. Now, when Black Ink Crew first came on, years ago i was heavily into it i watched it of course i was silly to think there would be more tattooing on the show versus drama uh however when i got hip to the program i honestly stopped watching it so much because i love tattoos actually my oldest daughter and i just got matching mother daughter tattoos um i'm twisting my wrist so you can't really see it but we just got those monday so I think they're just now a week old today or yesterday. Um, I don't know. It wasn't Monday. What day did we get these tattoos? I don't even think it's been a week yet. But anyway, I love tattoos. I love the stories behind them. So when I initially was watching Black Ink Crew when it first came on, I thought that's what the show was going to be about. Silly me. So the more salacious it got, the more drama filled it got, I just kind of fell off watching it because... That's not what I tuned in for, right? And plus, I can only take so much of the ghetto, ratchet, yelling, screaming, I want to fight everybody and promiscuity type of entertainment. I've, I've graduated past that. So I wasn't aware of the new dramatical excursions until they started blowing up on YouTube and on social media. Mm-mm. Okay, so this is a flat. Um, I love flats, but ironically, the four wings I have, two are flats and two are drumsticks. So I'm probably going to eat flat, drumstick, drumstick, so that the last wing I have is a flat, just because I'm quirky like that. But anyway, let me know if you watch Black Ink Crew or if you're like me. You started off watching it when it first came on. And then, like, as the storylines developed, he was like, I ain't got time for this. Now, I really fell off when Duchess, um, Duchess and Caesar, you know, broke up and was having all their drama and stuff. I really fell back because I really liked Duchess. I didn't like their relationship. It was toxic. But I really liked Duchess. So that's how far back it's been since I've, like, watched or even caught half an episode of Black Ink Crew. Just being honest. Mm, mm, mm. Mm! Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I just don't know. Okay. So, in the beginning, when the story came out, it was alleged that Ryan slept with the baby mama of his former best friend or current best friend, whatever. The story was so salacious because not only... Were they real life best friends? It wasn't a show type of thing. It was real life best friends. The gentleman, the best friend, was suffering and recovering from cancer when the affair began. So it was kind of like a double blow to the gut that one, you my man's, you ain't supposed to smash the homie. Number two, dude, I'm fighting for my life. This is how you support me? Like, so it was a double whammy. And social media was all ablaze and supporting a best friend and feeling bad for him. You know, but at that point, Ryan hadn't spoken out. The baby mama had spoken out. It was all an allegation. Well, as the story gained traction, Ryan and the baby mama spoke out and confirmed, like, yeah, we smashed a homie. Well, like, mm-hmm. This is what happened. We shouldn't have did it. It was wrong. But... It is what it is type. We apologize to him. He's trying to make it bigger than what it is. Blah, blah, blah. So, 
I feel like because they spoke out, I don't have to say allegedly. Because they confirmed it. It's just that the baby mom added a whole nother remix to the story. She was like, look, I done sat back and chilled. I done let y'all say blah, 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 whoop de whoop. Y'all supporting this man. But let me tell you the truth on who this dude is. He used to beat me. Talk crazy to me. Like it was a crazy relationship. I'm not telling y'all this to justify the wrongdoing that I did. I understand the two wrongs don't make it right. However, I'm just letting y'all know the true T because y'all falling for his crocodile tears. And I need y'all to know the real about this dude. So let me know in the comments if that changed how you felt about Ryan's best friend, whose name is slipping my mind right now, how y'all felt about his story. Did y'all feel like, oh, well, he deserved it? Or did y'all feel like, still two wrongs don't make it right, that man was dying, blah, 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 blah. I think it provided interesting context to the situation. But, outside of that, I want to talk about mental health how it plays a role in this story. Ryan said in one of his social media posts that he himself was going through some things and he was depressed. I don't recall him specifically sharing what he was going through that brought about the depression. But I remember him saying something to the effect that because he was depressed, perhaps that's why he acted out of character and smashed a homie's baby mom. He said he apologized. He admitted that it was an error in judgment. However, he was just giving us context like, here, this is what was going on with me. Then, too, Ryan's best friend admitted that he was suffering from depression and that I think he told, told us that a doctor or someone suggested that the depression was brought on about as a direct result of his cancer diagnosis and experience. Which could be quite true because oftentimes the, there is an incident, a life, a traumatic life incident that brings about symptoms of mental illness. That's why sometimes people call it situational depression, meaning it could come when the situation changes, whether it's the seasons changing, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's a traumatic accident that caused you to be um, paralyzed from the waist down, whether it's a cancer diagnosis and experience. So that sounds plausible to me. I'm just very grateful that these two men of color spoke out about depression because a lot of times in our community specifically, men are taught not to share their emotions, not to share their feelings, and definitely not to talk about mental health. Now, the situation in itself is a very unpleasant situation. However, I feel like if we can get and grasp a piece of Silver lining out of it is the fact that these two men talked about them having depression for different reasons, different types of reactions, but it seems as if they can possibly be a catalyst to normalizing the conversation for men of color around their mental health. So, with that being said, Trying to get out of dressing. With that being said, I'm not here to judge or to talk about the situation or to say who right and who wrong. That's not my place. What I do here on my channel is talk about mental health and healing, raise awareness, and, from, and I do all of that from a non-clinical space. 
people go through things in life and figure out ways to cope on their own. Now, the smashing the homies girl, one of the best ways to cope, again, I'm not here to judge. If a woman is in a situation and there's abuse allegations and bruising and receipts and protection orders and she copes by smashing her dude's homie, I'm not here to judge. What I'm saying is before any of those behaviors took place, it was talked about. And before, as evident in the text messages that were exposed, and before it was talked about, it was thought about. Right? So there were thoughts up here that either party had independently or together that someone sold the other one on the idea that this will help A, B, and C if we do X, Y, and Z together. Now, am I alluding that there was a formal sit-down meeting and conversation and we drew up some plans and this is what we did? Absolutely not. That's absurd to even think that's what I'm saying. What I am saying, though, is, is that when people are experiencing a particular trauma and there's a trauma bond between those two people and if there's a person in common there is a greater probability that those two people will blur all ethical lines, moral lines, religious lines, whatever, in order to come together and comfort one another. Even if in the midst they know it's wrong per se. And I think that's a conversation that's worth having and worth looking at because it happens more often than we talk about. There's families who have a loved one go to prison and that loved one's spouse is left on the outside and then that spouse go and smashes the homie or the homet or the family member. Simply because their source of trauma is something that they have in common. So in some twisted way to get back or some twisted way to help heal, people make decisions that may not be morally or ethically sound within the community. That's why I'm such a huge proponent of mental health self-care routines. Because practicing certain behaviors allow you to be tuned in, tapped in, and turned on with yourself. allows you to increase your self-awareness. And it definitely helps you to make better decisions when it comes to morals and ethics. For yourself, not for the community or somebody telling you something for yourself. And hurt people hurt people. So when people don't address the trauma that they have going on, if they don't resolve a situation with a loved one, if they don't feel comfortable with freely expressing themselves and getting all the negative energy out, they will do things that look crazy to other people or look messed up to other people or look like, oh, I would never do that. I applaud them for owning up to, in their space, their wrongdoing. However, I encourage them to seek healthy solutions to improve and support their mental health. Because there are some things that need to be talked about and resolved individually and as a group. And until they do that, that re-injury, that injury is going to keep occurring, whether... Ryan's best friend keeps bringing it up on social media, whether Ryan keeps talking about it, whether the baby mom keeps talking about it. And then we have to think about the children who at some point are going to be old enough to see and hear this information. Them admitting that they were going through depression, feeling hopeless, feeling hopeless about their future is a great first step. 
But now we have to take it a step further and do something about it. Do something healthy about it. Do something that's really going to improve upon the situation. And smashing a homie might not be the best resolution. I'm just saying. So, I want to know if you've been in a situation similar to that and how you handled it and or if you agree with my reflection about the situation that it happens a lot and that we must do a better job as a community to take seriously the mental health concerns that people in our community have, especially our men. No, not especially as in exclusively our men. I'm just saying especially our men because they've been beaten mentally and emotionally so much that they don't think it's okay to talk about such things. Women is, is accepted per se. Men are taught to toughen up, don't cry, be a man about it, stick your chest out, don't be a sissy, like all these different things. So men are pushed and steered into a direction that they feel may be masculine when it comes to handling such mental and emotional challenges. One of the biggest things that men feel masculine about is about their nether regions and about knocking down whoever they want to knock down. And a lot of times it's an egotistical move. But there's a reason behind that. Again, not here to judge. That's not my place. I'm just stating and encouraging you watching today. Be more sensitive. Be more aware. Be more tuned in, tapped in, and turned on. Not only to just your own mental health and your triggers, but also to those around you, especially men of color. Situations like this don't happen just out the blue. Situations like this happen because there was conversation. And before there was conversation, there were thoughts. And if either party was not tuned in, tapped in, and turned on to their level of self-awareness, their level of morality, their level of ethics, or doing something to support their mental health, then there's not going to be a person to stand up and say, this is wrong. There's not going to be a person to stand up and say, do you think we should do this? There's not going to be a person to stand up and say, oh, okay, we did it, but we can't do this again. Like, this ain't right. I don't feel good, blah, 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 blah. There are just so many opportunities to correct the, the error within that relationship or within those relationships and it just didn't happen. And by them admitting depression and then sis, if she was definitely beaten by him, she has some trauma that's unresolved as well. And I think the whole situation is just a group of people who are trying to cope, self-medicate and fix mental health challenges that haven't been properly addressed. I'm not quick to slap mental illness, the term mental illness on people. Because there's such a stigma behind it. However, I feel like if we normalize conversations about mental health and mental health challenges, people may, may be more open-minded until everybody grows up and can talk about mental illness without treating people different. I said it. So, I'm hoping that... All parties involved are actively seeking or actively receiving the help that they need to not just overcome this situation of distrust and smashing a homie, but to also overcome the situations before that that may have led to that particular act. There was distrust, there was trauma, there was guilt, there were broken hearts, there was anger all before it manifested into Ryan smashing the homies, baby mama. That's the point I'm making. That's the point that I want people to get to and understand. This particular act getting public is just a manifestation of things that were wrong prior to that act occur. Whether it was abuse, whether it was cheating, whether it was anger, whether it was guilt, whether it was unhappiness, whether it was disruption of peace, this act that we now know about as the public was just a manifestation of all these other things that were not addressed in advance. Depression is real. Depression makes people do things that with a sound mind, people wouldn't even do or consider doing. Or if they did it, they wouldn't repeat it. Am I in no, I'm no means in any way making an excuse for either party. 
I'm just trying to soften our opinions and our outlook and understand that depression is real. And yes, the act may not look good in your eyes and John Q. Public eyes. I just ask you to look deeper to the underlying mental health challenges that were clearly evident and present before they actually committed the act. If you have any questions about the services that I offer, the one-on-one -on -one coaching services that I offer to help you meet your mental health goals, you can visit my website at www.coachbmp.com. If you would like to do some independent work by purchasing my self-help book, Renew Your Mind, Take Charge of Your Mental Health, Eight Alternative Ways to Improve Your Quality of Life, there are book bundles now available on my website where you will get the book as well as the recommended supplies so you can work through the book. That book shares the eight techniques that I use to beat manic depression without medication. I was also a cutter uh, for many years, and those are the steps that I took to overcome all of that. If you want to rock some apparel to help support mental health awareness, that's on my website as well. And I just want to close out by saying that I really hope and pray that all parties involved are getting some sort of active assistance or help to restore their inner peace, to forgive themselves first and then forgive the other parties as needed, but then also to begin a routine to support their mental health in more healthy, positive, and peaceful ways. <laughs> if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click the notification bell so that you're one of the first persons to know when I upload new content. And when you click the bell, make sure it doesn't say personalized. Make sure it says all. Like this video, comment, share. Let me know your thoughts about the content and the things we talked about here. Again, if you would like to sponsor a future mental health mukbang, please send me a message via the website and I would love to connect with you so we can make that happen, Captain. <laughs> Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome to the returning subscribers. And let's, let's help us grow this thing. I would love to get... Um, on the low scale, 500 subbies before the end of the year. I think we're at 342. So if you can resonate with this content, if you have some feedback, if you have some topic ideas for the next mukbang, please feel free to leave them in the comments or send me a message on the website. Thank you so much for tuning in for episode 13 of Coach V's Mental Health Mukbang. I'm super, super excited. <laughs> All right, y'all. Don't forget, you are in control of you. You are the boss of you. Don't forget to check out my podcast on Anchor and all major podcast streaming platforms where I talked about the topic yesterday where you are the boss of you. Um, so that's why they came to mind just now. Follow me on Instagram at CoachVMP. I'll have that in the description box as well. I will see you in the next episode and I will finish my wings. Be blessed.